so desperately wants to give back and make sure that the, the field of swing conditioning maintains its integrity. And uh, uh, so he has got a lot to offer, obviously, with a lot of different sports. So uh, today he'll be going over uh, Olympic white belt training. Let me also introduce Alec, who's uh, a, a grad student of ours, who's been happy here in the Corpus uh, a while back, and then Kalen Simmons. Kalen uh, is a thrower here for his senior. Junior, really. Junior, uh, one of our one of our favorites in regards to her ability to, to execute technique and everything. So uh, they'll be helping us demonstrate. So give it up for. How many y'all currently use the weightlifting movements in your training program? Most of you. How many of you are certified to go through weightlifting? About four hundred. This is just to be a little crash course on how not to screw somebody up. <laughs> to put it in perspective, I did my first weightlifting meet in 1975. I'm that old. I've used the weight, the Olympic lifts, it's a little bit of power lifts to fuel the career, not just as a coach. I played 11 years of professional rugby over in Europe. I've won numerous powerlifting championships. Strong man, a lot of high end games. Being explosive is all I know how to be. I don't, even when I power lift, I didn't care about being slow. Deadlift here and there, still could pull 756. Still squatted 881 pounds. Didn't lean over as far as Coach Leduc, but that's what they were talking, we were talking about. That's what power lift is going to, unfortunately. Gear get out of the out of the sport. A lot of guys are finding they don't want it. The big heavy gear, so they're, they're finding that technique back again. Gear will help you uh, for technique. That's an easy way of saying it. So with this, you have to have great technique. And when I worked for the Spurs, when I worked in college, when I worked in rugby. Still get that mentality of just get it up. Just doesn't matter how much. Doesn't matter what the technique looks like. But there's a reason you use these lifts, not just for force production, but force production as well, which is the catch phase. So otherwise, we could just sit here and do high poles, upright rows, slow to high poles. We wouldn't have to worry about catching. But there's a reason to catch, and there's a reason to catch correctly. I'm going to read one statement off of my phone. It's one of the, uh, it's a quote that I've been using for most of my career. I learned it when I went to the uh, Soviet Union uh, when I was a kid, kind of cut through with it. Uh, it's directly for weightlifting, but it's also for any sport. And a weightlifter can develop the necessary qualities, strength, flexibility, speed, quickness, but if he doesn't have good technique, that insufficient technique mastery will limit the utilization of those, of those physical potential, thus inhibiting the growth of the achievement. This is from the 70s. Technique is everything. Football coaches like to use, you know, this, they do that. When you're, when you're in your training, you stop practice. If the technique on the offensive line isn't correct, you stop practice. If your receiver doesn't do something correctly, you stop practice. But you get in the weight room, and you can care less what, it's, what, it, what it looks like. You got the starfish catch, legs all the way out to the edge of the platform. I can't even get my short little legs out to the platform. You got the inverted C, bending over, and you wonder why your guys are hurt. You wonder why their knees are destroyed. You wonder why their lower backs are destroyed. Okay? So the first thing I always cover when I do anything like this is the basic squat. Everything, everything is built on the basic squat. World Weightlifting Championships were just in Houston this past 10 days. We went and watched a little bit of it, go to the training hall. Guys are lifting, guys are lifting, guys are squatting. Squatting, 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 squatting. Our greatest training, when we were the best team around, 60s, 70s, squat was the, was the, was the uh, biggest part of the program. Not just, not just the catch, not just the clean, the squat was, that's where you got strong. So I'm going to have these two stick the bar up on their traps. 
If we squat like athletes, that means the bar is going to be on the tracks. You're not going to slide it down. Powerlifting is a great sport, and I love it, but it doesn't move over into athletics. Speed, fairly narrow stance. You don't play football out here, you don't play any sport out here. We play sports inside of here, because this is where we want to be strong. Big, I, you know, I, got, I got taught big chest, big chest, big chest. And I started figuring out, you know, most people can't figure out big chest with weight sticking out of the back. So I always think about ribs. I want to think about the rib cage being up. Pull up in your rib cage, belly button comes up. Now you got now you got a big, you got a big, you know, shelf for that. Shoulders are tight, hands are fairly close, where they feel comfortable. They're not out here. You have no control of the bar if it's sitting on top of tracks. Powerlifting you do, because it sits down here on the rear delts, it's more of a four bar surface being covered. Not in this. Big breath, push your knees out, go straight down. Oh, nice back down. <laughs> do a couple more. Well, you'll notice that it's not hips back, searching. That's from powerlifting, and it, it has its reason. Push against the lifting suit and everything else. You can find it. You can bring it up. I start everything off with a back squat. I want to make sure. There are reasons that the person can't get down into parallel, below parallel. I want to see everybody squatting down here, all the way down, as far down as they can. But you have to figure out why. It's not always about the knees, it can be Jordan's flexion at the ankle. What people don't really realize too is if we're tight up through here, that's going to limit. If you get this, you know, look up here, you come in the air, and all that gets the arch. That big excessive arch, you're not going to be able to drop down below parallel. So just nice neutral head, looking out in front. You don't want to be looking down, but you just want to look out in front. You don't want to arch up because that's just going to limit where you can get to. I don't allow a lot of lean forward. Uh, this comes from coaching basketball players. That seven, <laughs> seven foot tall trying to teach them how to squat. We don't want to, we don't want an excessive lean forward. I don't want all that pressure on the lower back and bar right up their neck. Okay. From the back squat, we'll start, I'll start teaching the front squat. And at the same time, I'm teaching the front squat to the, my athletes. I'm going to start teaching pulls to the floor. And what I call loaded poles, which are from different positions, will walk out of the rack. Maybe come down to here. I'm going to see where they break apart at, even though if I can do it. I don't want to see just rounded back. It has to be here. It has, the back has to be flat. It has to have an arch in it. Because, if we have this arch and our shoulders are back, when she goes down, all that strength that she has is going to transfer through her legs, into her hips, into the bar as we're coming up. If she loses that and she rounds, all that energy just went this way. You can't get any more transfer into the hips. Okay? So that, that's where we want to be. We want to be nice, big, flat. It, for me, it comes from working in rugby and playing. Our, we have such an emphasis in the front row where I play, you know, as I coach, that we can't collapse, we can't collapse, we can't collapse, and I don't even know how to round my back to collapse. First started doing a strong man, tried to do a stone, you know, a little skinny guy that, that I'm trained with, he walks over the stone, he rounds his back to deadlift all the time, he just picks it up and put him up there. I'm over there with a 220 pound stone. Really, I can, I can do this, I just, I never got it off the ground until I finally learned a little bit how to round my back. Okay. Front squat. Okay. The front squat I start teaching long before I start teaching clean because I want to get used to this position here. Like I said, there's a reason to teach everything. That absorption of force is so important that when we catch the clean, I want it on the shoulders, on that rear that front deltoids. Hands can be relaxed like this. Elbows are going to be up. Go ahead, go ahead. So I don't allow 
this left this way with arms crossed unless they have a, have a reason. Uh, it could be an injury, shoulder injury, or anything else. What people don't realize a lot is these, these lats are going to get nice and tight and they get glued down to the rib cage. Get down, down in here, that's going to affect your, your ability to get through. The triceps, they get over, overworked or anything like that, that's going to be, it's not always in the wrist. Most people have flexible enough wrists to get through. Well, I'm real big on stretching. Obviously, you can tell I'm real hands on with all my athletes that I train, to include when I went to the Spurs and I'd have to get that 24 inch box over and step up on it. And, Try to correct anything Tim Duncan or some little guy did. But I always want to stretch, and I stretch. Get up through here. Coach Lou mentioned old, uh, old school pullovers that they put the bar. I still use them a lot. It's a great to stretch the rib cage out. So if you want to get here, you want to hold that hand straight. If you let the hand go, you're not really doing anything. We want to hold this hand here because I want to stretch the forearm too. Get up in here, and get a nice stretch. Get a good lift. Find where his range of motion is limited so you, you can get to that spot and then you can start figuring out what other stretches you can do for that. Right. Yep. <laughs> get a good stretch. <laughs> a lot of times, we always, everybody always wants to go right by hand cleanings. I like starting from the floor or starting from a loaded, like I said, a loaded position. I want to go down to the top of the knees. By the time they start doing cleans, they've done this so many times they want to strangle. But we go from there into the show, into the truck. You guys know how to do that? Sure. Yeah, it's all the way down. Think of our almost to the floor and come back up. Start from the top. Now you just go down and almost stop by. Come back up. There you go. Put that bar in with the weight lifts. Let your elbows unlock a little bit. If you stay too tight, you'll kick the bar out, which is great. So lift the weight here. Come up a little. There you go. Let me have a little bit. You want to pull, you want to pull belly button high? Okay. So every time you, you know, if we teach them in weight lifting, we teach nice, good mopping, arms, and everything else. But a lot of times that causes this. And we're trying to stay away from that. Because the, that's not the movement. The movement is here, it brushes in, and you, and you ride it down. But the bar is coming in. With that, I'm going to tell you one of the big phrases is strong in the right position. You have to be strong in the correct position. I don't care how strong you are down here. This is the position. This is where it goes. The bar comes up slow and controlled. Not slow, but controlled. And then it accelerates. There's always going to be two speeds. Elite lifters, three speeds. Before it ever, before it ever gets to the shoulders or overhead. If you try to pull too fast off the floor, your butt comes up in the air. Bar snaps back. The butt's up in the air. What, what are you going to end up doing? Even if your back is flat, you're going to end up picking it out. Then you got one heck of a reverse curl. That's a good looking arm player. That's a heck of a lower back injury, too. The, re and the reason I know it or I say it is doing strong man, doing the war, axles, being a dummy, not paying attention to my form and technique sometimes. Catch from from the wall. Catch with my foot going back. You can't do that with a wall. You gotta get it through shoulders and set back. Ended up with lower back injuries, knee injuries. So, so let's cover the. So that's it for the, for that. I'll teach you the pull. Go ahead. So whether it's a snatch or a clean, I'm gonna come over. Shoulders are gonna be tight. A lot of times I'll come back through and I'll remind them that I want it tight by sticking my fingers between their traps. I want you to squeeze my, squeeze my fingers. That way there's, when, they, when you really start to pull and it gets into here, there's gravity, man, she's, she's really an evil son of a gun there. 
she's pulling the bar back to the right. So you're trying to accelerate, she's pulling, and if you let go, and you're in this position here, anybody know why that, that's such a horrible position, even if you get it up? If the shoulder's round, if they round, you can't use your traps. I, I don't care how great you look or how, how well it is or anything else, how explosive you are at the hips. If you're rounded here and it's pulling, energy going this way, down, these traps can't, can't pull. So at the top part of the movement, when we hit the hip, we want to be right here because that's the only way the traps can get any elevation. You guys, a lot of hang, like hang cleans, hang snatches. I start, like I said, I start trying to get them to the floor as fast as I possibly can. It's already going to be quick through the middle. Most people have to have a real issue from the floor to the knee and that transition around the knee. And unfortunately, you just have to work with it. That's why I started doing more of the uh, what I call loaded pull. So loaded would be starting from the top. Make sure everything's tight here. Because I want to see that they can keep them back flat. Okay. Catch on top. A lot of times that quarter squat catch, that's where you decelerate. That's where you decelerate when you change the direction. As you're coming off of a jump. You're not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to teach you to absorb all the way to the floor all the time. We use it in lifting when I'm training my weightlifters, and I have several that are pretty decent because I want them to pull harder. Uh, a lot of times it's, you get guys, especially with, uh, with the input of a crossfit that came in. They're teaching a lot of guys that, all right, right away, we're going right to you. You did uh, two or three workouts, and now you do a lot as snatches, and you jump right in. You don't have a base for it. You don't know how to overhead squat. You don't know how to do anything else. You're going to get hurt. So we're going to try to, you know, try to you know, keep away from that. So that quarter squat right there, a lot of times when, we're, when, I'm, when I'm teaching it at first, we'll catch here, we'll stay, and then we'll ride it down. Eventually, you'll learn how to ride it down correctly. Um, I've got some really nasty, cool things that I do to people. Five behind the neck push press, hold, five overhead squats. I love overhead squats. I think they're the, one of the best things around. We're going to teach these guys, we're going to teach how to do a drop snatch first, and then we'll snatch like I'm needed, falling on the bench. And we were going through this before you guys started, so we get them while their shoulders are still kind of not that angry at me. Drop snatch, everybody know how to do that? We're just, we're just going to snatch balance as well. We're just going underneath the bar, trying to teach you to drop as fast as I possibly can, and not elevate the bar over your head. So you're trying to go underneath, so. I got, you know, like, like ladies that I train, there's ponies that are always back there. You use your, like, fat well, like, fat there for the back of my top of the head. I'll put my hand there sometimes. If you look in the mirror, you don't want the bar to elevate any higher than the, the top of the knee, the ears, and we might go underneath. But before we go underneath, the physics come in, comes into play. I want to tuck the elbows down because that bar is going to follow the elbows. Can follow the forearm. So if you're loose and you just kind of back there nice and loose, and you get ready to drop, the bar's going straight over your head, and you can't over that slot the bar over your head. It's got to be behind you. It's going to be sitting either over your traps or a little bit behind it, and it's going to dissect the hip, and it'll fall right out past the back of the knees. So.
if you don't have a set of knurling on the bar, when it hits, when it hits the uh, shoulders a lot of times, it'll slide. Go ahead and jump it. If it slides down, if they get out of position, people in my gym and everywhere I've coached, all you'll hear is the yell, bam, drop it. One of the first things I teach is how to drop the bar. We don't want to do it all the time. Do not do it just for reps and put the bar back down on the ground. There's some, there's some validity to the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the eccentric load. Just a little. Well, I want to say, pick it up, drop it, pick it up, take the bar back down. Plus, the bumper plates are expensive, and I can't find it. Well, we have a sweetheart over there, so yeah. Okay, sugar mama. I need bumper plates. <laughs> shake hands with my recruits and stuff like that. We talked to them for a minute. Off I, off I go after I spoke to them. Well, I want to see what kind of grip you had if you actually learned where, where the weight room was. Do you have any upper back muscles? Or is it much mellow and, and nothing there? You know, I don't need to see just because your shoulders are rounded. Is there anything there? And right here, I'm going I'm to pat right there. I'm going to get right under the records. Have you squatted? Have you pulled? That's the report I'm going to get back to the coaches besides all the other things. All right, let's go ahead and touch. Let's catch our power and then hold, hold the quarter squat and then ride it down. See the control, control pull from the floor, then the acceleration. Again, cannot accelerate it if it's not in the right position. I go back to the throw coaches that are talking about. You land in the circle, I don't care if you're spinning. I never figured out how they could do that, I'm not that coordinated, but even in the glide, you can't start accelerating the ball until you're in the right position. You can't accelerate for throwing, you're for batting, for anything, until you're in the right position. So that you, that's a, and it's a hard thing to get for, for young kids because they want, they think that they need to pull it as fast as they can off the floor. If you pull really fast off the floor, the only thing you do is decelerate. And you can see that this is a thrower. When it hit the hip, there was, there was some pop in there. All right, we'll catch you to a full, full snatch position. Bar's not going to elevate as high, obviously. They're going to go underneath the bar. And if you notice, you didn't, go ahead, go. You didn't hear any of this. I, I, 
can't tell you how many times I'm going to ask her that she can get off of my platforms and apologize to the platform. <laughs> <laughs> can't platform the ground if you're not on the ground. Weight lift is only going to move the feet out slightly. Pulling position or a jump position, feet straight ahead or unless you snatch your feet out a little bit. Into a catch position, which is a squat, which is just right here. Again, we go back to the same thing. We're back in that position. Start pitching. They do a whole lot of catches out here. Okay. The watch. You can see their feet set up. Toes will be. On a snatch, you've got to have your feet turned down a little bit just because you're squatting down so far. Back should be nice and flat. Feet are sliding. No big stomp. The little guys in weightlifting, they get it. They're just so quick that they're getting up in that big extension and they're slapping their feet out. Bigger guys, they don't. They just barely slide their feet out. We were sitting in the training hall in, in, in Houston watching the guys with feet just, I mean, sets of five with 180 kilos of snatch. One. After 400 pounds, 396. One. After another. After another. After another. After another. Suck the bar up, finish up, suck it up on the top. 330 kilo uh, squat, slow up 700 pounds, sit down in the bottom and triple, dump it off his back, walk down out. Three days before, three days before you broke the world record and clean jerk that had been standing for 11 years. So, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, one more time on the snatch. And from these, you can really get a lot of a lot of good things off of it. So I'll go one snatch and two overhead squats. Okay. One snatch, come up, come up. Overhead squat twice. Not going to do a whole lot of reps like that. We're, we're going to work those positions. We're going to get three up inside those positions. The correct catch positions. Correct, correct position. If you do enough overhead squats, you'll have some nice upper back muscles, which will also have some good functional upper back muscles. Because you know, looking strong, big and strong, strong and strong. Strong, and that, that, that's real important, but strong and explosive, that makes you weak. That, it's that simple. You can be, we've had this conversation together, you can be just big, strong, and I 881 pound squat crush about a 265 pound self down there. But I couldn't jump from here to that bar to save my life. Probably couldn't jump over a phone book. <laughs> Went back to play rugby, moved back, moved my squat down there. And yeah, granted, I've been lifting for a long time, so it's a little different than some of my rugby buddies. Moved my squat down to about 700, started moving my explosion up, started going back to my clean, started going back to snatches. All of a sudden, I'm playing rugby a lot better. And thank fortunately it was for money, so really had to play better or you're gone. We move from there to cleans. Full, 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 full power thing. And this is the worst one for high school football. I mean, the absolute worst. Because that's when you get the inverted seat. And it's so important that the, that the bar coming down, we hit the shoulders, it's connected, and we ride it down. We absorb force that way. With the shoulders, not take a seat. So if we catch it, here, like this, like a lot of them do because they're inflexible. What's he celebrating the way? Elbows, wrists. How long is that after you be healthy that way? Because you really, you really have to remember it's the weight of the pot here with gravity. And where I always say I'm old school, I'm proud to be nicknamed. And sometimes I do have a master's degree in physics and human movement. So the science behind a lot of this is my biggest fascination. I wish I had all of this when I was at UCSA and Baylor, but it's phenomenal here. I might come back down here and just come 
come for a class a couple of times just to sit on the corner and watch and go back to meet TSA and come along for some money back to the So you really got you really want to remember you don't want that to be accelerated that way. We want to be able to come through. We want to be able to get it. Um, a lot of times little thrills in order to reinforce that. This is one of my favorite ones to do. It teaches the elves, the athletes to get their elbows through really fast. That's it. Catch, load, drop. Catch, load, drop. Catch, load, drop. So, you got guys that won't get their elbows through really fast. They're afraid of the they got to press off of it. All of a sudden, their elbows are going through nice and quick. They have to get through. They have to get, get in the right position. And, I don't get this. So most of you guys are flexible enough, and especially in high school, I don't want to see catches like this. I don't want to see catches like that. I want to see that catch. And I'm going to work on that right there. So when you first like, you know, head out of, out of uh, sync with it, but when they're coming in, they're going to learn how to front slot. We're going to learn how to back slot. They're going to learn how to front slot. They kind of learn how to pull. And until they can properly show me that they can front squat and keep everything right here. I'm trying to get this, I'm trying to get the weight right here across their fingers. So they have control of the bar. I don't have any control of the bar right here. So if I'm sweating, which hopefully you are, it's going to slip right off. And you guys are going to end up in like, Under Armour shirts like this. It's going to slide right through and it's going to right off of their shoulders. It's going to come down. Even though you're not trying to do this squat, then you're going to end up, especially when it comes across, it gets across the arms. For me, it's cotton is really better than the kind of seats in the bar. You grab the bar a little bit better. Or I'm just so old that all my own unconscious. Probably true. I only got a couple of teachers that told me. Static and all that. As a, as a normal, as a strength coach, you know. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> Every time you go to a clinic, you're like, oh, teacher? Oh, that, thanks, thanks. I got three of them that look the same. Actually, I still have a box of brand new flexol t shirts from when I was with the Spurs in 99 to 2003. But they're great shirts. I just told you that they don't. They're in it with you. <laughs> so we go back to the clean. Um, Coach Ledoux had a great one. I'm always trying to figure out ways to tell people where I want them. If the bar will move, you can move the bar. I don't like the bar being moved. Where the bar is, that's what you move. And when you made it out of you, they painstakingly make sure it's rolling right where right, you right. And that bad boy's rolling away, you're rolling to it. Right when you get ready to relax and go, if there's a groove in the platform, it's going back to that groove. It may end up out a little bit on, on that right side. You may, look, you may be up there in front of a couple hundred people doing one hell of a bar over road. You can still out here. I'm out of position. I really can't do anything with that. I look good. All right, put that down and get a picture. <laughs> so, when he was saying was the first island, the bar covered that first island, and I was already playing over here, it actually worked out really well. That's I use the straps on my lifting shoes. There's a strap right across my, my uh, that first eyelet off my Nike lifting shoes. So, you go down. So we will always make sure we're here. Butts down. The butt and shoulders are going to come up at the same time. Not this. All right, go ahead. Big, good. Go back down. You guys, don't be afraid to quit. Okay, right. There we go. Don't be afraid to quit. It's only a little bit away, so don't throw it Two speed. Okay. 
voy a ir por aquí, puta. Yeah. I'm running for the athletes. They're always moving away from the ball. They're a lot of times it's just their starting position. Right. Are they jumping away from the ball? Yeah. Their starting position. And not enough front squatting, so they're comfortable catching the ball. Most of them are terrified to catch the ball. It, it takes a special, and by special I mean, you know, not that smart to want to, you know, stand here while the bar comes that far and then your throat punches you. It only takes a couple of times to uh, stand in a weight with the bar pushing across your throat but before you come blinky and, man, what did I look like? You look like an idiot. <laughs> so, a lot of times it's just the fear or it's, the, it's that inverted C. That's why I would call it here. And I stole one, and this might be really good for a lot of a lot of coaches. I stole one from Mike Clark, who was at Texas A&M for a long time, when he did the NFL. Chris? Oh, uh, Brown. Brown. Yes, all right. So Mike Clark, he said that if he had a guy, a kid, that came in from a program, and let's see who the train coach that did cleans, they snatch. You can't get a quick arm bend on the snatch. You can arm bend the hell out of the clean. Get up in here, and that's a lot of time you get the premature arm bend. That's when you'll get this as a lever instead of that. So, so we, he snatched. His incoming freshman, they snatched, they overhead squatted, they front squatted, and that was it. So obviously they didn't climb, and they banged, you know, they banged, and everything else. But that was they did. They didn't touch a clean for a year. I trained a couple of kids. One of them looked like a drunken giraffe, and we were trying to move with my, my lacrosse player and all the time. It's like 14 shoe, he was 12 years old, 6 foot 1, he was damn near a beard when I met him. <laughs> I mean, but dangling as hell, but it seriously looked like a broken giraffe out there trying to figure out because he wasn't strong enough to move his levers. We, every, he wanted to back squat like some of the other kids were, you know, going to train with me. <laughs> How'd that look? No, no, no. He was a great kid, nothing else you could say. Painful. So we front squatted. We probably front squatted for eight months. Learned how to pick the bar up correctly, front squatted. Learned how to pick the bar up correctly, front squatted. Did all the other, a bunch of other little things. I'm real big, I love doing pull ups and body weight, body weight things. Did all of that. Of course, just pull ups were one type of arm movement for me. It's like kind of, I don't like the bands and all of that. I squat. I'm going to find you where your weak is, where your strong is. I'm going to make you work for your different positions. I'm not just going to lift you up. Most of the time, because I can't see these guys. <laughs> and uh, so we did, we did that. Really worked well for him. Six, seven months later, barely 13 years old, he's won 225 for us. And my squad. And they always ask, you know, how, how long do I have to go? How long do I have to go? I've got to have it. Putting a, uh, putting a cup of water underneath the ground. So, put your boy in the back and you walk off. <laughs> That's how low I want to go. I, I, don't, I don't care. You're, you're, not, you're not power lifting with me. I want your knees flexible, ankles flexible, your lower back flexible, strong, healthy. If you want, you know, when you go off to college or somewhere else, if you want to squat high, just don't, don't. Well, they, they learn really quick. Don't put them up on Facebook or Instagram because I will comment. <laughs> well, I did not teach you to squat. What are you going to do with the other half of that squat? Right. Yeah. Is that 50? Good? I don't know how. I get them 53 and I still squat well below parallel. I still squat heavy. I just had heart surgery last, uh, last year or so. Even with the zipper in the middle of my chest, I can still put my hands back nice and tight and it's still squat heavy. I was squatting 265 pounds 16 weeks after surgery. Because the doctor made a mistake of saying, well, you can do whatever you want just within reason. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't hold my breath. He's the only thing he told me, don't hold your breath. Didn't hold my breath. You just don't think I held my breath. I can't tell because my head is this size and red all the time, so <laughs> that's, that's my excuse with it. I don't know my breath. I just look like that. 
Go back to the clean. Go back to a power. Power clean in athletic and, and sports. Again, we go back to the same it's good deceleration position. It's a nice brush on the hips. It's not a bang. A lot of times when you get them when they're, they're trying to accelerate too fast through, we can get them bang off the hips and it'll, it'll end up out there. And you won't even really be able to see it. There's a trick. If I had kids, we see banging off of the hips. My coach is when I was growing up, my friend has heard this a long time ago. I was a kid in the gym in the YMCA in Detroit. Um, I had a load on the bar for a couple of great lifters for national team lifters, Olympians. I loaded on the bar for them, their whole work ethic. Then when they went to the, when they were finished and they were stretching doing their other stuff, that's when I got to start with them. It was a long, never really loaded the bar. But it quickly got catch or out of time. But there were holes in the cold white tip. There were holes in there. And that's where you have to stand in front of them when you first start. But you guys that are like in high school, you guys that are swinging far out of the top If you're doing that one, when they're doing it, I'll stand in front of them like this. And I'll just come down with just to make sure that they don't I'll put a stretch in front of If they're going out there, I'll put it in a couple of this way. Something to make it not think about it, because if I'm standing there, it makes you nervous. He knows how to live, it makes you nervous. So I want to, you know, how the stick just doesn't work as well sometimes. I want to put my mind there. I do the same thing when I'm teaching agility work and trying to get around and I'll just stand right beside it and come and there and hit me. Unfortunately. A lot of times they do, I think it's just on the spine. Nothing like being old, beat up, and having an all black. Anybody know anything about the all blacks? They are the studs of the world in rugby. Just won their second World Cup. First team to ever go back to back. Won their third World Cup. First team to ever go back to back. World Cup every four years. These guys run, my forwards run probably three kilometers. Almost four kilometers a game, is that like two miles, a little over two miles a game. Still getting paid your body weight about 260 pounds. And play from January to November. Yeah. So they're kind of, when I refer to them, they're kind of the uh, studs of the world. Actually, the uh, All Blacks are the winningest sporting franchise in, in the world over the last 100 years. 86% of their games they've won over the last 50 years, they've won 94% of their games. And they don't play. We're talking about um, good character in sports. If you're a bad character, if you're, you can be the greatest rugby player on the island. If you're a bad character, you'll never play. Ever. For them. You'll still play Super 15, which is the NFL level of rugby, but you won't play with the All Blacks if, you, if, you're, not, if you're not a good character. So, with that, we'll go back to the clean again. And the catch, and we're going to go to a press after this, and then a jerk. And the catch, and then understand why the catch is so important. Pull fingers on the bar, pull fingers on the bar. Then again, we go back to. If we end up with that position and not this position, how are we going to do it from? Unless you're a weight lifter and you're going to push it up and pop it up and slide your hands, it's not going to happen. Unless you're, you know, 20 years old and flexible. Okay, nothing. Can we go to a push press first? <coughs> you're not going to get all technical with push press, push dirt, power dirt. I want a nice press. A lot of times we do military press for the reason that it's out of the Olympics. It's the same reason that it's not that great a lot of times in training. Because military press should be cut here, boom, drive through, and it turns into here, drive through, and it turns into an incline without a bench. Which is, again, why, why it was taken out after the 72 Olympics. Because this is what it looks like in competition. Okay, 
So we're going to go to a push press. I want to use the legs. I want to use the legs as much as I can. I want, I want good timing on everything. So bring it up. Push press over there. So we're going to take that out. We're going to teach our feet are going to go back into a jumping position. Right before we get ready to go, we're going to pull our chin back just a little bit. Like there was a tennis ball underneath it. And it will bring it back just a little bit. And it only takes one time to drill yourself in the chin for you to remember that. It only takes one time to drill yourself in the nose on the way up and your eyes start watering to remember. Okay? Just go ahead and drive it up. Yeah, for sure. We want to go right, go ahead. Right, before we, right before we get ready to go, we're going to drop the elbows just a little bit. We caught in this position. We're going to flex here. It's going to tighten everything up. And we're going to drive. Drive. And it's going to go behind the head. There's a sweet spot back there behind your ears, and that's where you're trying to get. So if we got the bar, we got the bar here, you're going to start chasing it, having to walk around. You want it just behind the head, almost in the same spot. If as the snatch was, was, we just don't have our hand out as wide, that's why it's not going to sit back that far. But it's going to sit right, again, right behind your head. Okay? Right over the tracks. That's a nice, strong position. If it's in front of the ears, you're going to chase it. If it's behind too far, you're going to hear me yell, you're going to hear me yell, jump and dump it. And then you're going to hear me yell at you because, you know, you might have bent one of my bumpers. We need those are expensive. Trying, trying the best I can at birthday coming up. We go from a from a push press to a power jerk. Power jerk is a double knee band. And back up. Okay. On this one, we jump our feet out a little bit into a good catch position. That way you're stable. You get your feet too close together, you get a bar over your head. You're going to be helicoptering and teetering everywhere. And it's going to be, as long as we don't, as long as it's not, again, out here, you know, touching the edges of the platform, we're fine. We're not going to drop all the way underneath it. I still have yet to figure out how the Chinese lifters do that. It's the most amazing thing watching a guy with all that way over his head here. Just ride them all the way into the bottom. The little Chinese, one Chinese guy has his legs way out here doing it. Looks like his arms are going to come off. Um, Kenneth Ferris, too, our, 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 our weightlifter, um, the best one we have in men for men, uh, does the same thing. And unfortunately, it's a hit or miss. If you're out of position, the bar is gone. At least with a split jerk, maybe you don't get as much weight. But at least you're consistent and you're going to get all three attacks. As opposed to the uh, USA men qualified for Rio Olympics, zero lifters. With a qualified choice. So I have one more shot, but right now it looks that many men are going to the Olympics in Rio in 2016. That's really unfortunate for a sport that had a payday here. Split jerk, the whole time I'm training, I'm gonna teach them how to split jerk. If I'm training a weightlifter, split jerk is gonna be, you know, obviously a strong foot forward. If I'm training an athlete, we're gonna go, we're gonna go set the two, we're gonna split both. So when that one lands, we're gonna be here. We're going to be on our toes on our back foot, and the big toe is going to be driven into the ground. And I mean driven into the ground. The front foot is going to land in inward side. It blocks. The knee doesn't travel anymore. Even if you watch the basketball player when he comes out, that's his shot when he comes in after a shot. It doesn't come this way, the knees are going to drift. We want to block the knee. That way we don't get any more forward, forward drift as far and start scaring the hell out of the judges. 
Bola the whole one more lap, one more run. Go to here, and then it's gonna stop everything. Up on the toes of the back foot. The bigger, it's, it's weird, the bigger the guys are lifting, and girls, the, the shorter the slip. It's only the lighter weight classes that have a big, big slip. That's really gonna be up to you and up to your teaching, <coughs> up to the flexibility of the athlete. You don't want to get them too far out, be back out here. There's no, there's like no man playing on the back side of that foot. And the reason I know that is I got a really cool looking star that goes up my Achilles tendon from rupturing my Achilles tendon to have it back there. Doing split snatches just for speed, quickness, just for throwing for how to get split, get back there for a nice little snap. Didn't tell somebody. Tucked around. Went to New Zealand, went ahead and ripped it off the rest of the way. Spent, still spent another month in New Zealand walking around like this. Who was still attached to that? New Zealand, I wasn't coming back. Surely I wasn't coming back early. You clean the bar up, you still had a car coming up. Tight, tight, very tight. You're going to have to have a belly up, belly tight. Rip up, chest up. That's the one thing I forgot to tell you guys. The bar sitting on the traps here, not just because it's a shelf or anything else, that's where we're pushing with it. The bar is going to stay in contact as long as you can until it passes the chin. That's where we're going to go with the most powerful. It's not arm. You can't go right to your arms. So you have to leave it as long as you can. Obviously, we're going to push it that shelf. It's a whole lot stronger than just to be your arms. It can muscle it that way. All right, go ahead and grab it up, slip. Nice. Turn that front foot in. Just a little bit. Just like on a lunge, you can where you do a lunge. Just a little bit in. Yep. Okay. Good. Put it down. When you teach them, though, one of the first things you have to teach your athletes, again, is how to miss. If the bar ends up down here and it's pushing, it's pushing it this way, do you really want your muscle up for Most coaches, oh yeah, you see it up, it doesn't matter. It really it matters, it's just you're going to hurt somebody. Okay, and that's a good way to get that man. We're going to come through here, like I said, it's here. A lot of times if they end up, a lot of times they'll catch like where, where the lettering is, and they slide, and then they slide the other ones through. We don't want that in. We want to come all the way up to the top. If it's overhead, if you're if you're you know if you're doing snatches and you program, teach them how to turn and dunk from it. It's not walk out from underneath it. One of the really bad habits that they keep putting up on YouTube all the time with the lifters. Um, those guys finish that last heavy set of squats and then they just walk out from underneath it. You have to understand. The people that are doing that and you're watching on YouTube are the greatest athletes in, this, in that sport. They're more flexible than you will ever believe. And you put up the videos of Kolkov, his father, still part of the Russian Weightlifting Federation, his father is one of the greatest weightlifters Russia ever produced at 105. That guy has been bred for exactly what he's doing. He's been lifting since he was probably there. Uh, he chose to retire in 2012 for some issues and uh, he's been doing really well doing the cross and stuff. Yeah, I saw the video of him doing the 200 pound hang snatch, holding below, yeah, hold below his knees just, and then dropping underneath it. Unbelievable. He's stupid strong. So, but those guys are the greatest there are. You're using it for sports and athletics. Who knows what you guys become, but they're not that. You can't get them hurt. And the coach of the league said it, and it's the one thing that got beaten into my head when I first started coaching. You cannot injure an athlete in training. When I went to the Spurs, 82 games, these guys did a check every game. That check was more than I was going to clear in a couple of years. I am sure as hell not going into Coach Popovich and saying, yeah, hey, shoot, David can't play, man, I broke him. 
But he wasn't doing what he was supposed to, so I, I got him. Can't do it. I don't, but I push him. I push them hard. I got guys to do stuff that they normally would not do because I explain why they're doing it. I explain how it's going to help their sport. Now I work a lot of private work. I have you know, kids that come in, their parents. I want their parents to ask me questions. It doesn't bother me. If I can't give you a good explanation of why we're doing it and how it's going to progress to the next one and how it's going to help your, your, your athlete, then I shouldn't be doing it. This is just one tool in a big ass toolbox. One. I'm a real big believer in medicine balls. I do a ton of throwing with medicine balls. Sandbags. Jesus. Sleds. I was using sleds before sleds were ever popular. It's funny, a friend of mine that, that played at UT for a coach of the Duke was telling me about the use of push shopping carts with, uh, with weights in them uphill. For a good drive. I used to do the same thing when I played rugby. I just didn't know any better. There were no sleds out. The crawlers and all that pretty stuff wasn't around yet. So I snagged a, a shopping cart from HEB. I put it downtown in uh, San Antonio when I waited tables at Dick's in the off season because even though I played pro rugby, I made about as much to cover my beer tab at the end of the season. I put a couple of a couple of sandbags in that were that were my babies that I played with all the time. A 260 pound sandbag, a 200. 40 pound sandbag and a 200 pound sandbag, they're always in my truck. Put them in the shopping cart, and I would sprint the ramps, jog the flat. Sprint the ramps, jog the flat. Eight floors. Get back to the top, put it in the elevator, grind it all the way back down, and do it again. And do it again. And do it again. Now I make guys do it. We push it up a hill, and we walk backwards down the hill to load the posterior chain. Rugby's got a lot of silly tendon issues. That's where my really started at. The other one hopefully won't rip off of the bone, but it's getting pretty close sometimes. All the way to walk back, although they mentioned really not it. So the, this is, the Olympic lifts are real important. They're real important to me because of the coordination, the explosiveness. The way wants to be strong and not be able to move. You're not very good for a sport, unless it's power up in the world. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, and like I said, I'm not buying power. I think it's one of my favorite sports. I had unbelievable amount of success. I moved here at Corpus Christi in 1985 just to power lift, just to power lift for a guy that lives here in town who was a two time world champion already. I didn't know anybody. There's a really nice park on Airline, right by uh, on Ocean Drive and Airline. Yeah, I slept in that park for about three weeks in, in my Jeep because I was too brain dead to go get in the park because I didn't think I'm really going to stay. So, this one, one tool in the toolbox, but it's a real important tool. I uh, use it correctly, it can really help your athletes, it can really help yourself. I'm still doing it. I'm actually hopefully going to compete next year in the Olympic lifting meet just for the fun of it is what I say, but I'm so competitive it won't be for fun. Anybody have any questions? All right.